You, you're telling me that there are places in the Old Testament where the name Yahweh equals Trinity. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, if you let me arrive at it by looking at the entirety of the Old Testament, absolutely. Yahweh is not a singular person. Isaiah okay. 54, 5. How, how do you, what, what is your method of determining which person is, is being referred to as Yahweh in a given Depends moment? Depends on the context. I'd have to look at the context to see, because, for example, in mm -hmm. Genesis 19, the Yahweh on earth, who's judging Sodom and Gomorrah, wouldn't be the Yahweh in heaven, who's sent down to fire. Mm -hmm. The sulfur. If if we're here here we're disagreeing on 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 the main uh, foundational of a main foundational premise on each of our theology because I'm telling you along with Trinitarian scholar Mary Harris that God the title God never equals Trinity. For instance, when we read in Genesis one it says in the beginning God created. We should never read that in the beginning the Trinity created. But you agree that if if what I'm saying is true. It would greatly affect the way that we read the Bible. Would you I, agree with that? I don't know what you mean by if I agree, that if I agree with well, you that... For instance, Genesis 1, there's a huge difference between saying in the beginning God, God created or in the beginning the Father created and saying in the beginning the Trinity created, right? Isn't that a huge difference? Yeah. So do you want me to address Genesis 1? No, I don't. I, I, I want to build. I don't, so what do you want me to address? The way we interpret the Old Testament is light in light of the New Testament. I'm a New Testament Christian. I don't ignore the New Testament exegesis and explication of the Old Testament. So if you're asking me how I deal with Genesis 1, are you asking me as a Christian who believes the New Testament? Then clearly in Genesis 1, the Elohim there, though doesn't include the Spirit, not because he's not God, because in Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit is distinguished from God, most definitely Elohim would have to include the person who becomes the man Christ Jesus. So I can address these points. That's why I'm saying your approach to John 1, personification is not going to help your case. So what do you want me to do exactly? What I can say is that what is now debatable is whether or not God ever equals Trinity. I'm okay, telling you. I was going to address that. But you don't let I'm me adjust it. And now let's let's look at the creation of Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Okay. Buddy, can can you let me show you how I prove that Yahweh does not mean a single person, but it does refer to Trinity? Can we look at Isaiah 54, 5? So I'm trying to be respectful because I don't want you to say I'm cutting you off and therefore make an excuse. I don't want you to leave. I want us to have a conversation. In Isaiah 54, 5, here you're going to see that the God of all the earth, whose name is Yahweh of hosts, is a plural God because of the participles used. And then I'll confirm it from Isaiah and Genesis that this Yahweh is not a singular person. But we got to get to it first. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Now, I sent you a link. I want everyone to look at the link. We're going to open it. You're going to see that the participles, thy maker, thy husband, they're plural. Thy makers are your husbands, plural. So if you show the word makers, it's the plural of Asa. It is a plural participle. It's literally your makers. And then when you look at the word husband, it's the plural of Baal. Your husbands are your makers. And yet the husbands who are their makers is the one Yahweh, the God of all the earth. How does your position account for the fact that here, and this is not just one, there's others too, Ecclesiastes 12.1 and so on and so forth, which we'll look at. How do you account for the fact that Yahweh God is now identified with plural participles, making him creators, husbands, and makers? How do you account for that as a Unitarian? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not an expert in Hebrew, so I would have to investigate it further. Okay, well, he just showed you. In fact, here, Ecclesiastes 12.1 and Young's literal translation. You don't even need to need, have the Hebrew. Now, why is this interesting? Because in Genesis 1.1, it says, bara, singular, Elohim, bara created. And yet here you have the plural form of bara, speaking of God as creators, thy creators. And here you're going to see that's how Young literal translation renders it. So you don't you don't even need the Hebrew. I'm going to bring the Hebrew. Remember also thy creators, capital C. I didn't. Wow, Young actually put a capital C there. Plural, in, creators in the days of thy youth, while that the evil days come not, nor the years have arrived, that thou sayest, I have no pleasure in them. Okay, so creators, why is it plural? Because now I gave him the link, interlinear. You're going to see it's the plural form of bara. It's plural for bara. It's creators, not creator. Why is the one God called creators, husbands, makers? You go to one single translation no, as if that's... Show him the Hebrew. Uh, it's right there. 
What I is should, it but, but but which which version of the Bible translates translates it like that? Besides the to. one, besides okay, they don't need to. Okay, I'm just telling you that. Okay. I told you I'm not an expert in Hebrew. Okay, but you said you I, wanted I told to you I, the Hebrew Bible, right? I told you I would have to investigate it further, but I'm telling you, it seems to be a huge mark against what you're saying when no translation translated translates it the way that you're translating it. Do you know why they don't? Uh, it's very easy. So that people don't think that the plural means they're multiple gods. They're not multiple gods. That's so. Why would they think that? Why would they think that? Like you would come and argue the way you do because of people like you. Okay, that's conjecture. And okay. have do have do, you want have to stay in exegesis or we're going to go off topic? Because I've been trying to exegesis no, I, I, and going into I, sermons. No, I hear I hear your point, but I made my point that that okay. not a single person interprets it like that. You provided one for Ecclesiastes. But then you're saying the reason they don't do it, you did, you made a conjectural assertion okay, about you, why they don't do it, but you have no evidence. Okay. What's that? Was, did you see it was plural though? Did you deny? Okay. Yes. He showed you yeah. the Hebrew, it says plural of bara. So if it's plural of bara, bara singular, what would that make yeah. it if it's so plural? You, uh, so is, is your, what you're saying there is that anytime we see uh, something like a, a noun that's plural, it refers to multiple persons? Is that what you're saying? Well, the argument of the Unitarian is there are thousands of cases where the singular pronouns are used for God, proving he's one person. When, when they, yeah. we flip it on, you say, well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. There are several occasions where plurals are used to show that singular pronouns only prove he's one God, not one person. Now you're saying, are you saying that plural participles and verbs and adjectives prove they're multiple persons? That's the counter your objection. Because your argument is that since no, there's that's, that's not my argument. Well, that's what Unitarians argue. You, you've never used that argument because I don't follow. No, it. I don't. No, I don't okay. use that argument. Okay, that's that's fine. not the argument I'm making. Okay. Sure. So now mm -hmm. in Genesis 1, the Elohim there that creates, was he alone or was the spirit with him? Who, who's he? The Elohim, because I'm going to say he for convenience sake. The Elohim. Because but who, 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 in, but who is he? Elohim. Are we talking about the Elohim? You mean the Trinity? No, not in that case. It would be Father and Son, according to John 1. Oh, okay. So we're, but, we're at Genesis 1, right? Yes. Verse 2, was the Spirit with Elohim? Okay. What, what, which, I mean, I'm not sure. What, what, is, what is your point that you're asking? You went to Genesis 1, man. I'm following your lead. I'm letting you lead, and I'm following okay. your lead. You went to Genesis 1, and you asked me about, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and earth, and is that the Trinity? Well, I'm going to show you that Elohim there, if we want to take it as the Father, as you do, not me, because I interpret Old Testament light of the New Testament. Elohim there, even if you take it to be the Father, he is not alone. There the Spirit is with him, creating with him, because of verse 2. Yeah, I don't deny that the Spirit's there. No, I, I, of course. Oh, so you agree the Spirit is there creating? God creates through the Spirit. That, so well, it doesn't really that. say that, anyways. It says that the Spirit yes, of God moved. It says uh -oh. the Spirit of God moved upon the I'll face of the waters. That's fine. You, no? I, I, but I don't. What, then you're arguing. I, I'm just telling you that I don't disagree that the the Spirit took part in creation. God so created through the that. Holy Spirit. You do believe yeah. that? Okay, so I don't need to establish God and the Spirit created. Yes. Well, now, well you okay. Just, you just well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's. I want to. I want to. Because you say God and the Spirit is God yes. the Trinity, or is God just one person? I thought I just made it clear. I'm going to repeat it again. In this particular context, if I read in light of the New Testament, Elohim is the Father and the Son. Okay, so but I'm let's look at Genesis. Yeah. Forget the New okay. Testament. Okay. I'm going to go with you. This is the Father. So the Father and the Spirit, you admit, created. Yes. You just admit the Spirit is a person that the Father talks to, because in Genesis 1.26, he's talking to the Spirit. What's that? In Genesis 1.26, when he says, yet, let us no. make one. What? We're not, we're not there yet. That's a completely yes, different. No, no, no we're not. In, we're talking 1. about Genesis 1, 1 through 3. That's what I said. Okay, well, you want to jump Genesis You want to jump to Genesis 1, 26. That's not because how it's Jesus works. Context, dude. It's not part of the context. Oh, so 26 is not. It's from the book of Job? No, at first he's creating the cosmos, and then, and then you're oh. talking about the formation of man. Yes. Uh, two and who things. is he talking to? He says, let us make man in our image. We're not there yet. I'll give you 10 minutes to read it. So we're going to wait for you to get there. Go ahead. You you don't jump to another text in another text. That's not you how mean within Hermes the same works. chapter that's about creation. The context, and there were no verses in the Hebrew that's added. The entire context is about creation. I'm in the context. I didn't go outside of the context. And I want to get to the climax of the passage, which is the creation of man. Dude, that's not how you do hermeneutics. You start with a target text. Okay, so... 
And we haven't established ready to move down to Genesis 1-2. What do you want to do, man? Because we're not going to get anywhere. I think you've shown what you needed to show, Sam. And we'll just let the audience decide.